the Wizards' playoff hopes just keep taking hits. Washington fell on Friday night in their first game back from the All-Star break, making that eight losses in 11 games. Meanwhile, the eight-seed Pistons won, pushing the Wizards to four games back from a playoff spot. With 23 games remaining in their season, the odds are increasingly stacked against the Wizards making the playoffs, a goal they maintain despite the injuries that have plagued them so far. Basketball-reference.com handicaps postseason chances and the Wizards currently hold a higher likelihood of winning the draft lottery, 7%, than they did making the playoffs, 4.8%. If teams maintain their current course for the remainder of the regular season, the threshold to make the playoffs in the Eastern Conference should fall somewhere close to 39 wins. The Pistons are on pace for 38.8 wins as they sit in the final spot. At 24-35, the Wizards need to go 15-8 from here on out to get to 39. That's a .652 win percentage. Basically, the Wizards would have to play at a 53-win pace for more than a quarter of a season. For a team that has shown no signs recently of going on an extended run, that seems highly unlikely. For it to happen, they would need a sudden defensive overhaul. Their offense, even in this 11-game skid, has been fine. During this stretch, they have been third in the NBA in points per game, 118.8, second in field goal percentage, 49, and eighth in offensive rating, 114. The defense has been an unmitigated disaster. They have surrendered more points than any team, 123.4, and the highest field goal percentage, 49.5, and three-point percentage, 42. The Wizards found salary cap relief in their deals before the trade deadline, but didn't add much in the way of a defensive upgrade. Jabari Parker is known for his scoring and made headlines earlier this year about how teams don't pay players for defense. Bobby Portis, though a capable rebounder, doesn't block a good deal of shots. Looking at their current roster, it's hard to see where the defensive upgrade will come from. Guys like Bradley Beal and Trevor Ariza can't stop teams on their own. The Wizards did not get off to a good start after the All-Star break with their loss to the Hornets, but will get another chance quickly as they host the Indiana Pacers for a 7 p.m. Tip-off on NBC Sports Washington. The Pacers, who hold the number three seed in the East at the moment, charge in having won seven of their last eight games. Technically, it represents an opportunity for the Wizards to punch back against a playoff team, though they will take a win against anyone at this point. More Wizards news, All-Star Bradley Beal returned from the break Friday night with an All-NBA performance. The Wizards still lost 123-110 at Charlotte. With those two sentences there's hope and fear for this season and beyond. Beal destroyed the Hornets for a season-high 46 points. His work over 42 minutes include high-level efficiency 16 of 25 from the field, sank all 10 of his free throws plus 7 assists and 1 turnover, and powerful moments. Beal scored 26 points in the second half, including 10 of Washington's 23 in the final period. The Hornets knew where to focus their defensive effort. Washington's leading scorer couldn't have cared less and turned in arguably his best all-around game of the season. When viewing a Wizards team going forward this season and especially next year for however long the injured John Wall sits, performances like this from Beal offer hope. Add starter-worthy help this summer, let Beal's vibe lead the way and perhaps the team isn't climbing uphill from the start next campaign. Finding steady assistance now is the dilemma. If the Wizards intend on bringing back many of the current pieces, that dilemma could linger. The non-Beals made only 10 more baskets than Beal and finished 26 of 72 36.1% from the field. Their collective assist to turnover numbers, 17 to 12, explained some unsteady moments, especially during the second quarter when Charlotte rallied after Washington led 38 to 27. They tried, they just didn't offer enough as Washington lost for the eighth time in 11 games. Washington insisted veteran forward and 2019 unrestricted free agent Trevor Ariza remains in its plans beyond this season. 
that's understandable based on Ariza's historically strong two-way play even if his age 33 and possible contract demands earned $15 million this season offer potential downside. The Wizards haven't received the full-throated version since the trade with the Suns sent Kelly Oubre Jr. and Austin Rivers to Phoenix. Ariza had 10 points on 4 of 13 shooting, 2 of 7 from deep against the Hornets. Usually a viable perimeter threat, Ariza entered Friday shooting 31.9% on three-pointers. Uber, a consistent plank during his four-year career, is hitting 32.4% from beyond the arc. Ariza's addition offers more than just scoring, and some aspects are not easily quantifiable. Some numbers that attempt that feat are not in love. Ariza's per, 13.1, Trail Subray's, 16. Chasson Randall and Wesley Johnson are not Washington's most curious backup guard tandem this decade. They might be close, however. Other contenders usually played behind Beal and Wall, thus limiting the downside. Johnson missed all five of his field goal attempts against the Hornets, while Randall played a basic 13 minutes. The Wizards bench was outscored 38-21. Head coach Scott Brooks resorted to a big lineup with Beal as the lone guard. This maneuver worked easier without a Porter or, at least defensively, Oubre on the court. Neither lives here anymore. Bobby Portis and Thomas Bryant offer Brooks two energetic interior options. With their size, mobility and shooting range, they seem like a viable pairing. For a team battered on the boards all season, using Bryant and Portis together conceivably boosts Washington's rebounding chances. Brooks skipped using them together much before this game. Their defensive struggles against Charlotte showed why. Washington was out-rebounded 53-43 all the same. This team looks nothing like the one Brooks coached during his first two seasons. Only Beal, Tomas Sadoransky and Jan Mahimi played for the team that came within one game of the 2017 Eastern Conference Finals. Ideally, Brooks's patchwork lineup generates needed momentum while a playoff berth remains in reach. Washington, 24-35, now a season worst 11 games under .500, fell four games back of Detroit for the eighth and final playoff berth. Conceivably, this core returns next season. Washington opened salary cap space by trading Porter's hefty contract. King Ariza, Jeff Green, Sadoransky, Portis and Bryant eats up much of that space. Growth from 2018 first-round pick Troy Brown and the arrival of a player with a 2019 first-round selection increases the upside. The hope for a turnaround comes from those that faced Charlotte Friday night. The non-Beals can do more now. Asking extra from Beal is outrageous, even if the shooting guard suggests that's possible. I wish I could pinpoint on one thing, Beal told reporters post-game when asked how this team finds a winning path. But I just have to elevate my play, that's all I know I can do is elevate my play and my leadership to do whatever it takes, that Beal believes more is possible is why he's a keeper. None of us should doubt him considering the strides made during his second All-Star season. His determined approach is the kind found with contenders. Even two-time All-Stars need help. Beal's teammates must provide some quickly to keep hope alive this season as the organization ponders plans for the next one. More Wizards news, the Washington Wizards lost to the Charlotte Hornets 123-110 on Friday night. Here are five observations from the game. When the All-Star break may have given the Wizards some much-needed time off, but it did not produce the reset in momentum that they were hoping for. They lost again on Friday night in their first game back and have now dropped 8 of their last 11. The losing overall has been devastating to their playoff hope, as and their latest defeat came against a team they are directly competing against. Hornets are 7th in the East, and the Wizards are 11th time is starting to run out, and losses like Friday's cause extra damage for the Wizards' chances of making the postseason. To at least Bradley Beal was good. The Wizards' lone all-star came out of the break like he never went away. 
He had 14 points in the first quarter and 20 by halftime. He finished with a season-high 46 points to go along with 7 assists and 6 rebounds. He shot 64% on 25 attempts. Beal also threw down what might have been the best dunk of his career. Not known as a high flyer, Beal got way up there for this one, bread off the top rope. Angry face with horns live stream. Fans a reason to tune in every night. Beal, by the way, now has 10 career 40-point games. That is tied for 5th in Wizards, Bullets history with Earl Monroe. The only guys ahead of him are Gilbert Arenas, 28, Walt Bellamy, 23, Bernard King, 13, and Elvin Hayes, 11. 3. The first quarter was a dream. The second quarter was a nightmare. After scoring 38 points in the first, the Wizards allowed the same amount to Charlotte in the second. They were outscored by 16 in the frame and never regained control. It was in the second that the Hornets bench imposed their will. Tony Parker carved the Wizards up off the dribble and Jeremy Lamb both got hot from long range and caught the Wizards by surprise with a series of intercepted passes. For the game, the Wizards bench was outscored 38-21. to They couldn't hold up their end of the bargain on a night the starters mostly played well. For Tomas Sadoransky was back after missing two games due to the birth of his first child. He hadn't played in 13 days before he returned to the starting lineup on Friday. Despite the time off, Sadoransky showed no signs of rust. He had 15 points, 6 to 9 FG, and 4 assists, though he did have 3 turnovers. With John Wall out, Sadoransky is legitimately one of the Wizards' most important players. That would have been surprising to hear before this season, but nothing about this year has been predictable for the Wizards. 5. We got another glimpse at the combination of Thomas Bryant and Bobby Portis on the floor together. It was just the second time in five games since Portis arrived in D.C. that has happened. It will be interesting to watch how much they play together the rest of this season, considering they have some redundancy in their games. Offensively, it might be able to work. They are both fast and can stretch the floor. But defensively, they are both limited in the amount of positions they can defend and neither protects the rim particularly well. Because of that, there are varying opinions within the organization about whether they can form a consistent front-court combination. That uncertainty has been reflected so far in head coach Scott Brooks's rotation. It is also something to consider as we project their futures with both set to hit restricted free agency this summer. More Wizards news.